better than Bryn. I am downstairs again in the kitchen. Um, managed to get one of them to sleep. The other one's asleep in the lounge. So, um, yesterday, um, went to the Carmarthen seed swap um, in the St Peter's Hall in Carmarthen. Took a load of our seeds with us. A load of beans and peas and um, a load of James's chilli seeds. Um, they went down very well. Um, lots of questions about them as well because they were some quite odd varieties of chilies that he's got. And we've come back with a load so I thought I'd talk you through the seeds quickly. So um, James picked up some tomatoes, some Hungarian chilli peppers, um, and some snowball cauliflower seeds as well as some fennel some fennel seeds so there's all sorts of different packets they were there some people have just put them in um, packs and some put them in envelopes and all sorts so yeah I got some giant purple alliums so that'd be interesting to see what they come out like and I picked up some broad bean seeds just a few of those see how they do um, and then I picked up, I couldn't resist all the flower seeds. Um, in this envelope, I've got several little envelopes in here, um, and I've got a mixture of flower seeds. There's some marigolds, some cosmos, poppies, marigolds, cosmos, poppies, um, white cosmos, pink cosmos, all sorts of different, um, flower seeds basically I think there's maybe some corn flowers all sorts in there um, so yeah I've uh, I've picked up those basically to sprinkle over some of the banks um, where I've cleared back now and cleared some of the um, the back of the, the slurry pit bank for example um, I'm just gonna go and sling a load of seeds up there and see what see what happens um, I've picked up some more seeds as well from elsewhere so I'm just gonna mix them all up in a nice big batch scatter them all up there and then I'm I've still got to rake it down before I do this and then I've also got some other plants then um, from my neighbour to put in um, she's got some plants that spread wildly so I thought things that self seed so therefore perennial things that just keep spreading and coming back perfect that's what I want I just want a mass of colour and flower and greenness and something that's just going to crowd out all the weeds and the brambles that are up that bank at the moment so that's for that and then I have got some woad, some woad seeds. I am looking to establish at some point around this place a dye garden. So I need to get these woad in this year because apparently they need to be keep continually fresh seed. So um, I need to basically till a chunk of soil, work out where I want to put this bed and uh, till a chunk of soil and then make myself my dye garden, my dye, um, my dye bed. Um, I have a feeling it's going to be top side of the orchard. It can't be too close to where any of the septic tank stuff's going um, for the tin hut, just in case because that would just break me if uh, they decided to dig right through the middle of the bed that I've just put in. But starts of a dye garden, people. Starts of a dye garden. And then, rather excitingly, I met Erica from Erica's Little Welsh Garden. And she has given me some loofah seeds. Loads and loads of loofah seeds. So I'm going to have a little look online and see how I, what I do with these little guys. And I'm going to have a go at growing some loofahs in the polytunnel. <laughs> um, I'm really rather excited about these. This is one of the things I really wanted to grow this year. Um, just because uh, it's a sensory tool for some of my uh, forest school things. It's I can fill them up with soap and use them as exfoliators. So I, now I'm making sort of my own soaps and bits and pieces. Or having a go at doing it. You know, maybe next year I could fill up loofahs with them. Um, so you can sort of exfoliate and wash at the same time. Something along those lines might be good. But yay, thank you very much, Erica, and it was lovely to meet you. Um, but yay, loofah seeds. 
Um, so yeah, I think that's about it really. Um, busy couple of hours. Um, oh, we also got a little baby oh, monkey puzzle tree um, and a seed of a monkey puzzle tree, which is sprouted. There's a nice sprout on it. So I'm going to plant that up and see uh, see what happens with those. Um, apparently you need two because they're not self-fertile. You need two monkey puzzle trees to pollinate one another. So that's uh, and within a certain distance of each other. So I think one might just plant them near enough together um, at some point around the holding. And uh, not too close to the forest school area because they're really spiky. Um, they had uh, some bigger ones there for about 20 quid. And uh, they were really spiky. Because, <laughs> of course, you have to poke them. Um, so... The lovely lady from West Wales, Justine from West Wales Willows there as well. Um, and uh, she was really pleased to see that all the willow that she has sold me has started to sprout. It's doing really well. So the dome, the arch, the tunnel, the fedge, they are all starting to sprout. So I'm really chuffed to beams with that. Um, what else was there? Um, there were loads of different stalls. It was a green fair as well. So the tools for self-reliance were there as well. Um, and we came home with a hand axe and I'm going to look down the other table see if they're not still in here um, a hand axe and a um, a fro for cutting shingles because um, I think that would be a, a useful tool for us to have um, I think shingled roofs are, um, are quite nice um, might be a nice thing to try and do for um, my composting toilets or something um, I don't know, maybe not this time around maybe we'll use a bit of tin but we shall see for future. Um, yeah, so Tools for Self-Reliance were there. We loads of different stalls. So they had uh, somebody selling soaps and hand balms and um, herbs for teas. Scythe Cymru were there. Um, Scythe Cymru are literally just across the valley from us here. Um, then, ooh, oh, loads, loads. I didn't get round as much... As I wanted to. Um, I saw quite a bit of it, um, just didn't didn't really get to spend the amount of time I wanted to at each at each stall. Um, generally, because um, you know, two year olds have very limited, <laughs> very very limited um, patience, um, and he spent most of the time crawling around on his knees. Um, and again, for a lot of the time, I also had Matty in a backpack, and if I stood still for any length of time. I'd either have my hair pulled or I um, he'd start bouncing around and protesting that uh, that he'd been uh, stood still too long and wanted to go and see other things. Anyway, I'm yawning my head off, so I'm going to go get this edited up and I shall see you all again soon. Thank you for watching. Bye.